okay so let's summarize what we did today so we talked about how to use backing services in cloud foundry what is a backing service so postgresql is working as a backing service in sap cloud foundry then we talked about how the diago core manages cell and cell manages containers and then sap cloud foundry will automatically connect your backing services depending on your entry in manifest to your application the connection once it is established your cloud foundry application will get a access to a vcap service variable at runtime from the postgresql and we will do perform different steps to to connect to the postgresql so first we created a postgresql backing service into sap cloud foundry with the name called mysql as a next step we have connected this postgresql service to our uh, manifest yaml we have given a new entry out there then in the next step what we did was we have deleted the properties file which was having a hard coding of database connection because in your quality and production system you may not want to connect to same database you want to connect to the or bind to the the the, the data service the backing service in cloud foundry and then we added all the dependencies which will help you to do different tasks so first two dependency of cloud foundry and cloud service connector will read the environment variable vcap services from the environment and pass it to a implementation of configuration class which is implementing abstract cloud config this abstract cloud config use eclipse link to create an instance of the entity manager and transaction manager and it also creates a database connection so entity manager is responsible for managing your ddl operations on database like create alter drop and the transaction manager is responsible for performing create read update delete operations into the cloud and then you have a database database pool which will be good for performance and also a database driver along with that we are using eclipse link library which is responsible to provide the instance of entity and transaction manager to the uh, to the uh, to the spring uh, spring jpm and then uh, to implement these classes we have implemented a database config class which is then we are also checking cross checking these environment variables yeah from our backing service and we are printing them also at runtime you can check them in the log and then we creating a data, data database connection we are passing this database connection to our entity manager factory and uh, also the transaction manager so eclipse link will then create these objects and inject it to our application uh, spring jpa and spring jpa will then provide you the interface to perform all the code operations in the cloud so then we also have um, uh, removed the properties file we build the project uh, locally and then we deploy to cloud foundry when we deploy the project to cloud foundry you can go back and check also the environment variables related to your project by cf env db boot and this will now show you the binding uh, or the vcap service variable at runtime so you can see it has a vcap service variable which is a cloud foundry uh, environment variable provided by cloud foundry out of the box and then you see a postgresql database is running somewhere in an amazon machine in europe so somewhere under the hood the cloud foundry created this backing service instance in a infrastructure provided by amazon in europe region so perhaps in berlin or frankfurt somewhere there was there is a computer there's a machine and in that machine it has cloud foundry automatically created a postgre database and it has provided you the instance or the backing service for that PostgreDB, and you can connect to this PostgreDB by binding to this uh, uh, through this VCAP service variable to your Postgre database at runtime. So this way, you have also a uh, backing service running in uh, into the quality system production system with same name. So once your application is moved from one space to another space in cloud, it will automatically bind to that PostgreSQL database with the quality in production system. Additionally, we have also seen how to use uh, the concept of ID ID generation using a GUID strategy rather than generating just a number. Uh, from our database table and that is how our entire application is then ready and we can insert a new record to uh, our database application and then you see the record got created so if i go back and add another record for example on about trainings <clears throat> and actually and i'll say install.abap and gmail.com about trainings and a gst number and a save then 
I, if I go back, it's saved. So let's go back and do the run of microservice and you see a, another record has been added into the Cloud Foundry PostgreSQL database somewhere running on Europe with an Amazon machine as a physical infrastructure. So that's an end-to-end -end tutorial of how do you work uh, and build a microservice which use a Cloud Foundry PostgreSQL database and also the inner working of Cloud Foundry. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe this channel for more interesting videos like this. For detailed training on Cloud Platform, Cloud Foundry, feel free to join our course on Business Technology Platform with anubhavtrainings.com. With that, Anubhav signing out. Thank you and goodbye.